Hello. Hi. I hear you. Oh my goodness. How do I get my screen? Oh, there we go. You figured it out. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, good to see you. Thanks again for doing this. Of course. <laughs> it's, it, it is such a weird transition uh, to, compared to like a late night show where you get announced. This, you just kind of pop in and now you're here. There's no well, wrap up. I've done a late night show, so this is all good for me. It doesn't that has to be but that has to be by choice. That has to be by choice, Justine, right? Like they That's offer it very to you. Flattering. <laughs> very flattering and a little misguided. <laughs> <laughs> um just to let you know, there's folks watching on uh YouTube and on lonelyjukebox.com. So um I just this is not like a pre-recorded thing I'm gonna edit later. So I'm just you know doing my due diligence and letting you know. So great. Not that you've done anything embarrassing. I just feel obligated to tell you. You're the first guest of the night, and I just want to kind of let you know. <laughs> Great. Awesome. <laughs> um, and uh, since you said you haven't been on a late night show, I'm tempted to move this back like four hours and then have you back another time so we can count it as like your, your debut. Okay. All right. That's fine with me. Or you could just replay it in like a few hours. <laughs> I absolutely will. I mean, since uh, they're all pre-recorded, you know, <laughs> right now. <laughs> that's true. I could do whatever I want. And, and and a phrase I hear a lot now from everybody is just, well, I have the time. So yeah. do. everyone does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those watching at home, this is Justine Loop. Uh, she's an actress. Uh, many of my friends, uh, I don't know if you like being told how people, what they know you from, or it's disconcerting. I don't know, but a lot of them, a lot of them have said that Willa is their favorite character on Succession. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, that's really flattering considering that there's so many awesome characters on that show. I feel like it's like a buffet of wild people. So Yeah. Um, and a lot of the scenes literally take place at like buffets in a mansion as well. Oh, no, the amount of buffets. And I'm not one of those actors that doesn't eat during the, <laughs> during the buffets. Luckily, though, they're the real deal. They have, like, the best food in those buffets. They really do, like, pimp out all the sets. Like, the props are pretty realistic. So I've had a good, a that's good, so, many so exciting. delicious meals on set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thrilled to hear it's not plastic grapes uh, or they take it away from you before they, he gets to actually eat it. No, no, it's so good. In fact, when we were, we were the first season we filmed in Wales at the end and they had this like incredible caterer do all of the prop food. And I remember being warned like several times by the director that I, they were like, the amount you're eating in every take, you're, going, you're not going to be okay by the time this is done. <laughs> Trust me, I have a very large stomach. I'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, and you got to eat now because you may go to another show you're working on and there may be no food. It's true. It's true. <laughs> uh, I realized, I, I explained to you what this Lonely Jukebox is yesterday. And as I was explaining it to you, right before I said it, I said, you know, it's really simple. It's just this. And then halfway through the sentence, I was like, this is a very convoluted concept. So I'm going to explain it again to you and just to folks who are watching as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, those who use smartphones uh, in certain ways know that in bars, there's an app on your phone. One is called TouchTunes, not a sponsor yet, um, but they um, uh, they let you play music on a jukebox in a bar while you're still sitting in your seat. Um, so you don't have to walk across the bar in front of all those people. So they don't know that you chose a specific song maybe, um, but maybe you're embarrassed by it or you're just lazy. Um, and uh, now you can check for bars within a 10, a ten mile a ten mile radius on that app and um, to try to figure out which bar that you're in. Um, so after everything closed for COVID nineteen, I checked that app late one night, and um, there was all the all the jukeboxes had gone dark, meaning they were unplugged or the power's out, which makes sense. Why would you run that during a when the bar is closed? Except for one, the airport pub and package in my hometown uh, in Northwest New Jersey. Um, in rural, nor rural Northwest New Jersey. So I played a song on there just to see if, if, if this was a dream or if it was real, and it was real. So then uh, a week later, I decided that I would put it out there that anybody who wants me to play a song on this jukebox inside this closed bar can do so. You just got to send me the dollar twenty to pay for the song. And then to make it worth their while, I also give $2 uh, uh, to directly to uh, servers and bartenders and kitchen staff who have lost work. And it's all through Venmo? 
it's primarily Venmo is a great way to do it. Yeah, if you have Venmo, that's the simplest, easy way to do it. But um, I know not everyone does. So if you happen to have a Cash App or Zelle, um, or if you're my dad, uh, he gave me a, a crisp $20 bill today. So. What's your Venmo again? Uh, yeah, it's just um, my first name and my last name with a dash in the middle, Curtis Dash Ray. And um, that's R A Y E. Um, for those watching on YouTube, I put it down in the description of YouTube. And um, if you're watching on the website, LonelyJukebox.com, I put it above the video and below the video. So I don't want anybody missing out uh, on where to send the, uh, the money. Uh, this is exciting. You're the, you, if you're looking me up now, that's exciting. You're the first guest to do it during the uh I the am, show. but I'm not, I'm not finding you, dude. <laughs> oh, no. C-U-R-T-I-S dash R-A-Y-E. C-U-R-T-I-S. C-U-R-T-I-S dash R-A-Y-E. Let's try it again. Enter. Ah, here you are. Yeah. All right. um, cool. This is a, yeah, this is a step up. A couple other guests, after they left, they kind of like threw some money my way and declared a song on the way out, which was pretty you? cool. Yeah, that's me. I'm a bit bigger than that one. I apologize for it. four digits of it, your phone. It says that I need that. I will give it to you. Uh, it's weird. Some people have, it asks that for some people, some people it doesn't. Um, the first time, when I did this last week with Cecily Strong, she asked and I thought she was scamming me. I was sure I was being scammed by Cecily Strong. Oh, she um, asked it too, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, 2998. 2998, all right. Now, now everyone has to just guess the first digit. <laughs> I get a hold of you. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, thank you. That's, that's, that's very generous. And that entitles you, at least by the end, you can pick a song, but maybe I'll just pick a song to, that's from the, I have a list uh, to work off right here, right now. And, um, oh, nice song. Yeah, did you have any, um, particular genre you're not that I'm going to pick your favorite genre, but what are you into music at all? I am. I'm, I like, I like a lot of different kinds of music. I love, uh, folk. I love pop. I love uh, r and I love rap. I'm well, pretty versatile in terms of my taste. Well, this is great um, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, ironically, I'm, I know very little about like popular music. Uh, I, I enjoy bluegrass music and, uh, and like Benny Goodman and like 1930s big band. But any, when I was in school, like I, I never kept up with any of that and I, and I still don't. Um, so you can help me out. In particular, uh, I got a Venmo from a, a gentleman named Chris, and he just wrote, <laughs> you're not gonna, he wrote any rap song is what he wrote. Um, okay, what about an Anderson Pack? Does that count as rap? You, you're asking the right guy as the authority on rap. And, what did you, Anderson, who? Anderson? Anderson Pack? Oh, oh, yeah, there he is. You're in um, He's got a period right in the middle of his name. He's the uh, best. All right. Yeah, he's definitely here on the jukebox. Um, you want to hear like 30 seconds of Anderson, an Anderson Pack song? Yeah, which one? Boy, oh boy. Um, the most popular one is from a Trolls movie. Don't slack. Um, let's go for a deep cut, though. Um, I'm going to pick the eighth, ninth, or tenth most popular song. They're all explicit. Let's see. Tint, no, Bloody Water, or Suede? I would go... Hmm. You pick. I'm fine with any of those. Okay. I'm going to pick Bloody Water because I, I hope it's about sharks. So let's find out. <laughs> let's find out. Um, there we go. My favorite would be Come Down. Oh. Just, just for your listeners. <laughs> Thank you for preserving your uh, your credibility. <laughs> um, let me look that up. And In fact, I'm, my my boyfriend and I are trying to learn a choreography, a choreographed dance from it right now. Uh, do you um, are you do you want to perform that for everybody um, no. tonight? No, one day. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. We're very early on. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm gonna, uh, I don't think you can hear it through my computer, so I'm gonna um, 
blast it over to uh, this speaker over here. Okay. okay. Here we go. song and that will get you hooked and then you'll want to go in and, and listen to the rest okay i will um i will use your donation later on and play your favorite song into the airport pub and nobody will hear it and it'll be wonderful sounds good <laughs> um i did like that he rhymed water with lawless i res i respect that yeah he's fucking he doesn't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> no not at all <laughs> um have you seen this gentleman in person? Anderson? No. no. Ah. Mm -mm. I actually haven't been to that many live concerts. Why is um, that now? Are you um, are you uh, uh, scared of um, uh, will call windows or what's what's that about? No, I'm just a homebody. I'm just oh. I'm really like I'm I don't go out much. Uh, in fact, when you asked me what my favorite dive bar is, I had to like go back to high school. I'm not. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> to like to like fake IDs high school time because I just don't go out very much at all. Um, and that's my answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you comfortable saying where this high school was? Yeah, I, I'm from Denver, Colorado. Got it. Um, yeah. And um, I, I never had a fake ID. Um, my so brother made them. She, she made them? My, my brother made them. Your brother. While. yeah yeah <laughs> uh what what makes a person good at fake ids is it just having a lot of no fear and hubris or like being a good graphic designer i think both i think it's like a winning combination <laughs> he, had, he had a he was kind of just the most chill unafraid guy got a got a, it also like a really friendly disposition which i think like got him away like he got a lot away with a lot of like mischievous activity um or he would get caught and then like kind of like finesse his way off the hook so he had that going for him and he also was a visual artist and uh, is like very meticulous at editing and and has a lot of a high threshold for spending a lot of time on detail so i think that those are the the things that made him successful in the video <laughs> that's great uh and did he did he did he stick with that? Is he doing it? No, he stopped. He actually got into a, uh, he got pulled over with shrooms when he was like much younger <laughs> than he is now. This is years and years ago. And the, uh, and he kind of stopped all that nonsense. So he didn't know he had them in the car. And, uh, yeah. and from that point on, he, he like, it was like, all right, I've got to, got to get this stuff together. And no legal activity since he was like a teenager. That's good. That's a good lesson for the show. Uh, and I'm on his side. I, I think I think they were put there. I think the cops put them there. So yeah, yeah they planted them. <laughs> um, uh, I tried to uh, put some like interesting things next to me here, just really for the looks of um, of what's going on. One of the things next to me is my driver's license. Uh, oh wow! What yeah. a coincidence. <laughs> I'm about to hold it up to the camera, but then I'm like, if you know the last four digits of my phone number and the expiration date of my license, is that bad? I don't know. I don't know enough about this to know the answer to that, but... You haven't had to research any rules that involve the... Uh, I feel like if you put like a flash, a flash, yeah, like a little flash, no one will be able to read it. See, that's not giving me anything. That's just like a blur of color at that point. Do you want to see mine? Mine's really bad. Yeah, I look like a crazy person. <laughs> it's really a bad pick. I'm yeah, I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not agreeing with that. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you are though, <laughs> and that's okay. That's fair. 
Um, oh yeah, I forgot. So you got a New York State driver's license. You've been in Denver, LA, and you spent enough time in New York as well. I live in New York. I am. Um, I live in Brooklyn, but I was out here, literally, like right as things were kind of hitting the U.S. I, I was, I was here, and then we kind of got stuck here, and that we just felt like things were too chaotic in New York to go back by the time we were supposed to go back. So we're kind of just waiting for things to get a little less um, rough over there. Yeah, you're not wrong. I think if you went to the airport and sh showed your ticket for New York City, they would, um, they would be like, hey, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, we're sheltering in place. We're not really down to travel right now. So <laughs> no, not like, how are we going to get back? When are we going to get back? You know, it's such a weird. Yeah, um, I like that phrase, down to travel. DTT? Down to travel, not down to travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I've lived in New York. I went to school in New York uh, for four years and then I lived there for a while and then had like a couple years out in LA and love it, but um, ended up moving back. Good. We're glad to have you on the East Coast. Like I said, I'm, I'm up in New Jersey, like an hour and a half. I recently moved back home. I'm in, in Northwest Jersey. Uh, where, where in New Jersey? as far northwest as you can go in sussex county uh is that where where's howell in relation to that do you know Howell? i believe howell is is quite south of us um <laughs> but new jersey's not that big it's like three and a half hours top to bottom but i think but howell is certainly south of us just because we are as far as you can go uh we're you know on the delaware river um you know, crossing over into Pennsylvania and New York, all you can throw a stone to all three states. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, I had an ex who lived in Howell and his family, we would go there all the time. I loved New Jersey, what I saw of it, so. Uh, it, it's very diverse, and you've touched on my favorite topic, which is New, New Jersey, 21 counties of, of beauty. Uh, <laughs> it's the Garden State. Um, and yeah, not everyone, people think of New Jersey, they think of the Sopranos or Jersey Shore, but there's this beautiful part up here. Yeah. Uh, do you commute to the city for UCB and stuff, or do you? Yes, but not regularly. Um, like I used to live in Jersey City, and it was I was much more active at UCB. And then when I came back here, uh, I'm working at the Family Biz at the moment, and uh, Family Biz. The Family Biz is uh, also not a sponsor, so we don't need to t talk about them too much. Why um, not though? You know. <laughs> uh, RV rentals, motorhomes, trailers. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, which has been deemed an essential business um, by the governor of New Jersey. Um, so uh, okay. we are op well, open. It makes sense. People, people want to get away. Yeah. It's true. Um, and we don't ask questions. Actually, we do. <laughs> we want to know why they're taking <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Where are you taking this? How many people you're putting in it? Um, uh, yeah, it is. It's interesting. Some people, um, one gentleman, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's planning on going to Florida and he, and he, and, um, uh, he, and then he's like, you know, I don't, right now Florida's like saying that he needs to quarantine for 14 days. And he's like, I don't know if I want to do that. So he's going to Tennessee. So you, you have options, uh, America. Sorry. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll go to him. Yeah. If you, um, if you need to get back to Brooklyn. Let me know. And parents are doing okay. I mean, it's good that their business is staying open. Yes, I am. I am very. I I realize how lucky I am. That one that I get to live in a place where I can stretch my arms out and not touch another person, and that the business is still doing okay, and uh, we still have our, our employees there. Yeah, which is like another reason I, I feel I chose this charity of uh, helping out um, tipped workers because they seem to have like a real raw deal right now. Um, yeah. Because restaurant, there's no incentive for people who run restaurants to um, bring back their workers, and which is understandable. But yet, you know, a lot of these folks, especially a lot of them are younger too. It's like your first job, and you might even s still be on your parents' uh, tax returns, which means you can't get these stimulus checks. So, like, just an injection of a couple hundred bucks would be like a nice thing. Uh, my um, local coffee shop. I'm pretty close with the staff there, and. I've been keeping in touch with them and seeing how everything was doing. They shut down, but I guess they're reopening. And one of the employees was saying, you know, like I want to get my job back. 
I want to go to work, but I don't have health insurance and I don't want to go into that situation right now before this ban is lifted. And you aren't, we're supposed to be like sheltering in place. He's thinking of opening next week because I guess they sell, they sell sandwiches and stuff. And she was like, I just don't know what to do. So it's a really tricky place that a lot of them are in, you know, not knowing how to move forward in a way that's like responsible to their health and also like helps get get things going again and not wanting to lose her job. It's really rough. Yeah. So. Let's transition from that into a song by Mr. Neil Diamond. My, I have a, I have a, a, sorry, a to bring the mood down. sorry to bring the mood down. I mean, it's <laughs> the reality of what's happening, though, you know. No, so. I, I am joking. I started it. And also, <laughs> um, I think personal stories like that make it uh, help reveal to people. There's so many different sectors of the economy that people didn't realize that need to all work together. People are now learning that supermarket employees that are so vital. And it's not all, you know, yeah, the, uh, people forget about coffee shop employees and the choices they have to make and the person cleaning the coffee shop and the choices they're going to have to make next week. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's so you're see. playing Diamond now? Is that what you said? I, I had said Neil Diamond. Someone had requested Neil Diamond. Um, That's a good one. All right. Uh, we'll do Cracklin' Rosie by Mr. Neil Diamond. Um, let's see. Uh, and this is by Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. And and um, you know, even though on the website I say if you send a dollar twenty to cover the cost of the song, that's enough. Many people have given more. He just gave twenty bucks, and that's um, super generous. And I hope I'm not embarrassing Andrew by saying that. Uh, now your family's going to hit you up because they think that you're rich. So um, let's see. All right, Cracklin' Rosie. <laughs> so what other props do you have to, by your uh, by your I, I will show you, but I can't burn all of them. Uh, I got two other guests tonight. <laughs> oh, 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 right, right, right. <laughs> I'll show you another one in a moment. This is Cr- Cracklin Rose. Oh, don't you know? I had me a time with a poor man's lady. It's been on a twilight train. Ain't nothing here that I care to take along Maybe a song To sing what I want No need to say please to no man that song makes me reminds me that that's another way you can get back to Brooklyn is a is a train. Uh, a romantic midnight train that Mr. Diamond sings about. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, RV number one choice, though. Uh, we'll get one out to you if you need one. Um, train, hitchhike, airplane is what I would say. Cru- cruise ship around through the Panama Canal. That's choice number five. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, you asked about this prop up here. Um, I am a certified notary public right there. Okay. That's also for, I, I got that done uh, for work and for, and for anybody who wants things notarized. Um, like 300 bucks, right? It's, I don't think it's that much. And it's, it varies state by state in, in a dramatic way. For example, I'm a certified notary in New Jersey and New York. New Jersey, um, uh, well, so that New York, you had to pass a test, like 40 questions. So, so you got to study for it. New Jersey, you just write a letter to your local congressperson and say, can I please be a notary public? And they say yes, and that's it. Um, wow. And, there, and, and there's like a renewal fee, but- Can you only do it in New Jersey, or can you do it, so you can only do it in New Jersey, though? No. I can. Why? Do, are you applying to, like, the military or something? and need me to notarize something for you? No, no, I'm just curious about how it works. Like, if you're going to get notarized, if you're going, no, it's not important. I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> um, can it be, can I notarize like, a like if, if if New Jersey has the easiest way of becoming, you know, getting the your certification or whatever. That's a good question. You go to New York and do notary there. Or are you only allowed to do it in New Jersey because they have that kind of protocol that's a little more lax? Yeah, I'm smiling because I I forgot everything I learned in that New York State test. I'm gonna say you have to do the test, so you just <laughs> know the very basic, which is 
I got it. <laughs> uh, I'm exposing myself to so many, you know, fraud charges here. Um, well, I guess you could do it. I'm going to say you can do it anywhere except um, I have to, the person has to be in the room with you when you're notarizing it. So if someone from California is like, uh, wants me to notarize something, I, I, I couldn't. Um, I see what you're saying. Can I take the test in Jersey and go back to California? Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know. That's something to know. Oh, wait, I did figure it out. I figured it out, uh, Justine. I figured it out. The re the, re the whole reason I passed it in New Jersey and New York was because you can't go state to state. That's um, what I was, Yeah, okay, cool. That makes sense. <laughs> Uh, we, I feel like we worked that out together. I appreciate your help. We did. <laughs> um, uh, can I tell you? Um, so I told you that my friend said Will is their favorite character. Uh, I also thought it'd be fun to introduce you the way that mom, my mom, uh, remembers you, and maybe mom's everywhere. Because I told, I sent a picture, and um, she didn't, she couldn't think of your name, but she said, uh, "Oh, the, the the one married to the guy running for president." So she knew who you were. Yeah. yeah. And then in um, oh, Richard's coming in. Um, that's that's great. Um, and and then in Mrs. Maisel, she said, "Oh, the the convert." Yeah, so, she's got so, it. She's got it right. I I was worried about saying that to you because I didn't know if it was offensive that that people didn't remember or that she she defined you as being married to some guy. But um, no, no, no. Yeah, it's not like in the show you said it, it, it wasn't like a big scene chewing scene where you said my name is Willa and everybody knows it. So like moms are off the hook. She said she's with the guy who's running for president. That's what she said. Yeah. Okay, good. As long as she doesn't think I'm married to him. A lot of people say you're married to that guy. I'm like, no, we're not married. That's part of the fun. Right. Uh, that's a huge plot point. Um, yeah. No, she didn't. She picked up on that. She knew what yeah, was going on. I'm happy that anyone remembers me at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think after tonight... Uh, many folks will remember you. This has been a lot of fun. I'm not kicking you out yet, but I just I do want to say this has been a joy spending time with you. Yeah, yeah, I love this. 